Hi, my beautiful friends. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I am so excited, you guys. It is story time. Um, I miss these actually myself. So I do have a few new products to show you today. And um, I do have actually a couple of stories. Uh, one's like a show and tell. So if you guys want to see what that is and how I came up with this look, please continue watching. And if you are new to the channel, we are so excited that you're here. And we really hope that you do consider hitting that subscribe and notification bell to join this awesome family here all right you guys let's get into story time Okay, you guys, I am so excited. Today is actually going to be story time. Um, I've had so many requests, you guys, on story time of like my birth experience with Kurt. Uh, even though it was 30 years ago, I get it all the time. Um, people love to hear those stories, I guess. So, um, And I do have a show and tell, you guys, because since the last uh, filming of story time, couple things have happened. Shocking. Uh, first of all, let's address the elephant in this room. Uh, the sty on my eye. <laughs> I got a sty. I get them from time to time. And this one, it was a doozy. Uh, I almost didn't film today because of that. But I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's not that bad. So I've been putting the heat compresses on it and doing everything I should be doing. So, oh, well, <laughs> but I'm going to be putting on makeup. I shouldn't be doing that, but I'm going to be. Okay, you guys, so the first little story time, uh, the show and tell, is um, the other day, um, I was, well, it was about a week ago, I was cutting up some watermelon, and I have these containers that I put them in, and I just happened to set this container on the stove. You guys probably know where this is going, <laughs> considering my other story times, and yeah, you guys, I don't know how this happens. I don't get it, but the stove was like slightly on um i let to, uh i went to go let kane out uh to go outside so i was sitting you know at the chair by the door uh the door wall and all of a sudden <laughs> the house started filling with smoke you guys and i'm like you have got to be kidding kidding me i'm not cooking what is going on i'll show you what was going on here's the container i was gonna put it on <laughs> you guys i mean i'm not i can't make this stuff up i i, I can't and here is my uh, yeah, the stove. So it was melting all in there, and thank goodness the house, or there was no flames, but boy, was this house filled with smoke. So, yeah, you guys, I, I don't get it. It's like I am destined to be around fire, which scares the heck out of me because I'm like, why? Um, sorry, you guys, about that bang, but um, I hit my microphone. And the other story time is... Um, I ordered something from e.l.f. It was actually, um, I got the one e.l.f. that, I don't know, the glow, the glow thing. Uh, and I ordered a deeper shade because I want to do something with that. And I got the box. I was super excited. that I opened it. And you guys, it was empty. There was nothing in the box. How does that even happen? I mean, seriously, guys, I, I, I don't get it. The guy had one job to fill this box with my product. And I empty. I mean, wouldn't you think when you lift something, it might feel a little light, you know? No, it was just, you know, the stuff that they pack in there. You guys, that's my luck. So the, those are the stories that have happened just between all of that. Okay, you guys, let's get into the makeup. Um, you know, if you're new, I'm sorry. I do these rants in the beginning all the time, but um, I'm starting to learn to put uh, timestamps. So take a look down uh, in the uh, description box and there'll be timestamps. So I do have a few new items, you guys, that I do want to test out. And the first one's going to be this here. $5, you guys, this palette. Wait till you see this. I got it at Five Below and it's called Smoke and Mirrors by Creative Glam. Uh, it's an 18-piece eyeshadow kit. Uh, there's no mirror, but look at these shades, you guys. I mean, I cannot even take, you know, what is going on here with these, you know, brands. These no, I don't know, no-name brands. I guess it would be small companies or something. And But I swatched them earlier. You know, I'll probably put it up um, somewhere around here. But, I mean, you can come up with so many different looks here. So, I'm super excited to try this out. I haven't put it on my eyes. I just swatched them. So, mm -hmm. let's get to it, you guys. And we'll get into the story time of my birthing experience and raising an only child, an only son. So, we'll just get into it, you guys. And I'll just try to 
get as much that you know in as I can during uh, putting on my makeup. So, um, oh, again, if you're new, the, how this works is I basically just show the product um, when I'm using, and everything will be in the description box below, uh, except there are a few uh, new products here, so I will touch base on a few of those. But usually I just show what I'm using and I tell the story. I guess I'm going to start from the moment I found out I was even pregnant. So we were living in Italy, um, and my husband was in the service. And um, you guys, the service was very strange back then. I don't know if this would even be legal uh, today or how they are today, but um, <laughs> looking back, I just, I don't know. It was a little shady. So anyway, we were over in Italy. They were very controlling of their soldiers. So his sergeant one day goes up to Daryl and he says, um, I think your wife should go get on birth control. And you guys, I've never considered birth control only because of my family history of having blood clots and stuff. I just was always afraid of birth control. So I, it just was not in my plan uh, to do that. Now at the time, I really didn't want kids, you guys. I come from a large family. Um, there's five of us children. And um, yeah, I just didn't want, I honestly didn't want kids. At the time, I was super selfish. Um, you know, I just couldn't see myself being a good mom. My mom also ran a daycare, so they, you know we always had these kids running around. I'm like, heck no, I don't want any of those. <laughs> you guys were young, you know. I think I was 21 at that time. You know, so, so being uh, being pregnant was not my plan, but I didn't like that they were, you know, telling me to go get on birth control. I mean, what the heck was that? So anyway, I listen because you know he's in the service. Of course, you know we're going to listen to what they say. And I go to, you know, go get on birth control. Well, of course, they test you before they do that. And you guess what happened, you guys? Yeah, I was pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> and I had no idea uh, that I was. And now I'm scared to death to even tell Daryl. He's scared to death now after I told him to tell his um, sergeant or wherever the heck he was. And I did not want to have a child over in Italy because I do know... I had heard in the past that, you know, all of the boys, um, men that are born in Italy um, need to go back and start, you know, serve in their military, which is the carbonary, I believe. Now, there's a small window to get your child a uh, citizen, U.S. citizen, even though we're living in um, Italy. I, I also would take you guys in my head is one screw up. I'm sure the army wouldn't have, but in my head, one screw up and Kurt would be considered an Italian a civilian. I guess they did stop that in 2004 where the men do not have to serve like, you know, mandatory in their military. So I really like this. This is, I, you guys, I just tapped it. These are so pigmented. Okay, now I'm going to go into the shade here. Um, I don't know. This is just calling my name, this green here, this passion. So I'm going to try it. It's not very summery, but oh well, you guys. <laughs> I do want to try it. So it worked out to where, you know, we were actually going to be leaving uh, Italy the time he was born. But all it would take, you guys, is a, um, you know, a early birth or, you know, <laughs> me to go and labor early. And yeah, I would be paranoid. So anyway, um... Yeah, Kurt was conceived over in Italy, and I came home. I can't remember how far along I was, but it was pretty far, you guys. Let's backtrack. I always do this, you guys. Let me talk about <laughs> the first uh, few months of being pregnant. So, um, this is really pretty. Hmm. Uh, the first few months, you guys, after I found out I was pregnant, all of a sudden, within weeks, I was getting the nausea. Um... It was pretty bad in the morning, so I basically would set salting crackers and like a Sprite or something uh, by my bedside, and I literally could not move until I had a few saltines, all that good stuff. Um, I didn't get physically sick only once, you guys, um, so that's not too bad, but the nausea was off and on for, oh gosh, I would say at least three months, and the things that would set off nausea was noodles. Great, you guys, I'm in Italy, but noodles would set it up, and especially egg noodles. To this day, I cannot eat 
egg noodles. I don't know what that was about. So now I think I'm going to go into, um, these two shades are just beautiful. Um, these here. So this is like a, uh, green, uh, shimmery satin finish. And this one, I don't even know you guys. Let me swatch both of these and see which way I'm going to go. So this is the green. Ooh, that is pretty. <laughs> and oh my gosh, they both are gorgeous, you guys. Oh, I don't even know what to do because it's so pretty. I don't know. Maybe I'll end up mixing them. I, I can't decide. This is just too pretty. I think I'm going to start with the green one uh, first, though. And, uh, yeah, so again, you know, I was pretty lucky with the morning sickness. Um, so anyway, we flew home on our way home. So I'm pretty far along, you guys, and I have gained tons of weight by that time. Keep this in mind. When I got pregnant, I think I was like 105, 108. Um, yeah. So, uh, I've already gained probably, <laughs> you guys, probably, I don't even know, 30 pounds. I don't know. It's just, I could not stop eating. I was hungry all the time. You guys, no matter what I would put in my body, it just wasn't enough. I kept eating and eating. So I'm pretty big. Where is my brush, you guys? I literally just put it down. You guys, I don't get it. I put a brush down and it walks away. I did find it. So anyway, um, I'm pretty big and I'm swollen. You know, it's a long flight. We had several uh, stops to get back to the States. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty uncomfortable. And at that time, people could smoke on the plane, you guys. And smoke normally does not bother me, but on a plane, in a tube, and they're all smoking, I'm pregnant, I'm miserable. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, you guys, I think I'm gonna put this in the inner corner. I hope this, I hope I do not regret, <laughs> regret that. Um, so, yeah. I'm just gonna kind of blend it into the green. You can hardly tell, and I'm just happy it's there. It was an interesting uh, pregnancy. I just, like I said, I was hungry all the time. You guys, I had a thing with ice cream. I couldn't stop. Um, that was the only, I didn't have any weird cravings. I just couldn't stop eating. You know the ice cream things with the, it's like a two, a bucket, and it has like the handle? I would go through one of those, you guys. I'm not even over-exaggerating once every couple days. <laughs> Um, and I will never forget, uh, it was like the last appointment before I delivered Kurt. Daryl finally went with me. I wouldn't even let him come with me because I was so embarrassed of this weight gain. But I'm like, at this point, he's got to come and he's got to get, you know, prepared for what's about to happen. So he came and I got weighed and he goes to the doctor. He goes, is that normal? He goes, uh, she's the one that's going to have to lo lose the weight after." <laughs> Because other than that, you guys, believe it or not, my sugar was fine. Everything was fine. You know, I was healthy. Um, but, you know, they were convinced, too, that Kurt was going to be huge. Um, I did find out. I hate surprises. So I did find out uh, the sex with Kurt before, you know, he was born. I wanted to know. I wanted to prepare. I'm one of those people that want the room done, the clothes bought, you know, for whatever um, sex Kurt was, was going to be. And so, you know, we knew he was, he was going to be a boy. Um, he, you know, just was full blown. Hey, here I am. And one of the ultrasounds and we knew, um, but you know, the birth itself. Okay. You guys, that's where we need to get in because the birth itself, this was quite a nightmare. I mean, everybody has their nightmare stories. I get it, but I'm telling you guys who, when they say that you forget the pain, Again, I don't agree with uh, that statement. Um, I forget the feeling of the pain. I don't forget that it was excruciating and I was very nervous to ever do that again. So I will finish up this eye, you guys, and we'll come back and I'll finish up the story. Okay, guys, let's take a moment to appreciate this palette. It is absolutely beautiful. They blended beautifully together, you've seen. It was pretty easy. Um, that was real time on this eye, too. So. Yeah, this is a pretty amazing a, a palette. This is through iMethod. Met, I I've had it forever. Um, one side, there's like a little stamp that will make a wing. So it looks like that. So it will create a wing. But what I find easier is on the other side, um, it looks like this. I want you to see how easy this is to create a wing. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna start like this, you guys. I have found that this is the easiest way and I kind of look down in my mirror 
and almost looks straightforward though because then I know where to place it. Move it to where you guys can see. And I'm going to trust myself and not lift that off the eye. Now I kind of went down there but that's okay. I can wipe that off. And then I just go back in and fill this in. Did you guys just see how easy that was? And then at this point you can make it longer if you want but I just want a baby wing. So yeah, this is a super nice pen. They sell it right on Amazon. I love it. So if you were afraid to do it this way, you can always do like the wing stamp. So I'll hurry up and do the other, other eye, you guys, and then I will continue on with the story. Okay, so now we are going into the birthing part. And yeah, you guys, it was not um, fun only because, again, I did this to myself. Um... So when I delivered Kurt, I was 197, you guys, 197 pounds. And I did not want any epidural. I didn't want any drugs. And I will explain. <laughs> I wanted to experience the birthing part in full. Um, I don't know why. I think, you know, because I had seen a lot of videos. I'm like, oh, it can't be that bad. And um, so I'm just going to go with this. And uh, so I just wanted to experience that on itself. And I definitely did not want drugs, um, especially because you guys, I think I've told you guys this in the past in some of my videos, I hate being sick and I did not want to, you know, be in labor and, you know, being sick all over the place on top of it. So I refused any drugs. We were over at my sister's house and we were cooking, um, I think it was Chinese or something. And I we were supposed to bring the wok uh, from my parents' house. And so we get there and she's like, did you guys bring the wok? I was very edgy that day. I remember I was in a really crabby mood. And I'm like, gosh darn it, no. And she goes, well, you're going to have to go get at it. You know, I'm going to need that to cook, you know, this Chinese. I'm like, so I'm upset. You know, I get in the car, you know, I'm banging and slamming and my mom's with me. And, um, okay, really quick, you guys, I'm going to go in. This came because I'm going to be testing out um, the new Laura, Laura Mercier uh, translucent loose setting powder. And it's the ultra blur one. So it's this. And it came with samples, you guys. Let's see if there's enough um, foundation <laughs> to uh, try this. And there is a piece of hair that's driving me crazy. Um, so the foundation is in cashew. Hopefully that will match my skin. And it's the Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Foundation. So, um, yeah, you guys, I really don't know much about it. And I'll maybe put something up here more about that. But let's go in with this primer. Uh, it just says it's the Pure canvas primer so it's hydrating um yeah uh, silicone free so let's give this a try so we get to my mom's house of um you know to go inside to get the walk and all of a sudden i go oh my gosh mom i just peed my pants <laughs> and she's like what i guys you know how i am i just go into complete um denial and i'm like no this can't be happening kurt was supposed to be born in october and it was um, September 28th. I will say that I do like this primer. It's very like watery, I will say that. Um, but it's very, like it says, it's very hydrating. So um, I do like the way it feels. It feels almost like a moisturizer. So uh, that is super, super nice. Okay, you guys, opening this and trying to put it on my palette, I have made a complete and utter mess. Um, you should see my hands. So I'm actually going to place a little bit on the back of my hand just to see if that does oxidize. Hopefully, I'll get a little bit out of it at the end. But it is super light. Um, I think it's going to be too light for me. Uh, Self-tanning, so I did add a little bit of the e.l.f. Um, what do you call that pigment stuff so we are just going to mix that in and hopefully i can darken it up a little bit so it does definitely look like there should be enough for my whole face so it's very creamy um i will say that i probably put way too much there um yeah so i'm just going to go in with a lighter application and see what happens here you guys okay so um yeah my water has now broke and 
you know, I'm going into panic mode and Daryl's over at the other house. Um, my mom's just with me. And so we get in the house and that is pouring out of me in buckets. So I had to, we had to get a towel and put it in between my legs. And my mom goes, well, don't panic. You know, it's going to take some time uh, before stuff to really happen. And so we go back um, to, you know, where my sister is, everybody's at. Um, and Daryl and I called him, you know, we called on the way. Or before we left, because we didn't have cell phones, I don't think at the time. We went right from uh, my sister's house to the hospital. Well, Daryl gets in the car and, you know, we're driving. And at the time, I didn't feel any contractions, really, or anything. Um, you know, it just basically happened. Well, he starts, he's in panic mode. He's acting calm, but he must be in panic mode because... He's going the wrong way to the hospital. I am like, oh my gosh, Daryl. I go, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> so he's freaking out, you guys. And bless his heart. Um, it is still way too light, you guys. What is up with me? And <laughs> But um, I'm going to have to darken this up. But it looks really pretty from here. It's not bad, you guys. Uh, it's a little drier or more matte than I would probably like on my skin. But... Um, it's pretty full coverage. I will say that I do like how it's sitting around the pores We're on our way the wrong way to the hospital. So finally, you know, he turns around and we're heading back uh, to <laughs> The right way to the hospital. Okay, you guys I have a lot of interruptions in this one, but um, I got a new bronzing kit I got this from the five five below and It comes with this. These are all like highlighter type toppers but that's the bronzer there, there, so I'm going to try it. We get to the hospital. You know, I'm getting all checked in, and I start feeling some contractions. Um, nothing serious. I was probably being more dramatic than uh, they probably really were because I'm thinking, okay, everything's going to start rolling into action here. Well, it didn't, you guys. You know, it just we're waiting and waiting. They had you know, hooked me all up. I was hardly even dilated. I'm trying to remember, I want to say that we went in. It was probably uh, the time we got all checked in and stuff. I would say it was about seven o'clock at night, um, around then. And um, you know, they had me walking around. Uh, I'm doing all of that. And they said, listen, you know, you might as well try to get some rest, um, you know, before things really start happening. So I did. I think I fell asleep. And finally, the next morning came and nothing's really happening. At this point now, they know that they were going to have to start inducing. And I was really nervous about that because, you know, you hear horror stories about that. So I'm like, okay, here we go, you know. So they start putting whatever medicine into my veins, you know, to start this inducement or whatever they did to get it going. And I'm telling you guys, that is when everything just took a turn for the worst. And I swear, every time that nurse would come in, I, 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 I did. I wanted to smack her. I'm like, do not give me any more pain you know this is ridiculous and they kept saying hey do you want an epidural and i kept refusing like a fool but don't turn that up you know <laughs> um yeah you guys so it was just getting so intense and it was all in my back we'll come to find out later in life um or at that time i have a tilted pelvic so things are going to be a little you know hard um and i remember at one time kurt was just turn not breach or anything he was just his head was the wrong way so they had to go in and turn it to be the right way that was absolutely excruciating pain um you guys my sister you know she was in there for a long time rubbing my back because like i said it was all back pain and she couldn't rub my back hard enough you know i'm just like janai you have got to rub harder you know it's, it hurts so bad Poor thing, you know, she must have been, it, this went on for, I, I know, hours. And by then, she had rubbed so hard that now it's raw. You know, there's literally, it's raw. Uh, like a rug burn on the back, you know, on my lower back. And, you know, people kept coming in. My mom, Daryl's mom, you know, Daryl's sister's there. You know, everybody's there. And in the beginning, you know, I was all excited. I let everybody in. And, like, 
as it was getting more intense, you know, I'm like in tears. They tried putting me in um, like a, a pool type thing or like a large tub. Uh, we tried that. Uh, they tried having me um, squatting. Um, I just was in all, you guys, all these different positions, you know, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. And now it's, you know, probably around four o'clock and it's super intense and nothing's really happening and I'm not really dilating. So finally, it just becomes too much and too many people are coming in. I kicked everybody out. I'm like, everybody just, I go, Daryl, don't let anybody else back here. I can't take it. You know, it's too hard for me to um, talk with people. You know, I, I just can't do it no more. So we kind of kicked everybody out, you know, which I kind of felt bad about. And I know people, you know, must have been hurt, you know, especially Daryl's mom because she's a nurse, you know, or was a nurse. And so... You guys, I just couldn't do it, though. I, I just needed, you know, to concentrate. I needed, you know, the less people in there as possible. So it's now just Daryl and I, and um, he's doing all that he can. Bless his little heart. Um, this blush is interesting. It's an interest, or the, um, what it, bronzer. As you can see, it's like a weird color. It almost has like a green. Um, maybe I applied too much, so... Yeah, it's almost, I don't know about that one, you guys. Um, hmm. Yeah, do you guys see that? It's, yeah. Either you got to be very, very light-handed, or it's just got, like, some kind of weird pigment to it. So, I'm just going to try to fix that really quick. Oh, well, you guys, I'm just going to have to keep moving on. Uh, yeah, just very interesting that it looks fine here and green there. Hopefully I can fix this with blush, you guys. And for the blush, I'm going to use uh, one of those the uh, Luminous Putty Blushes. And this is just a different shade than I used the other day. It's called St. Bart. So this is the shade here. That's super pretty. Okay, you guys, let's see if I can try to um, camouflage that. Um, and I do know with these, you can be a little bit more heavy-handed um, because they are kind of sheer, hopefully. <laughs> Um, yeah, you guys, so now I'm in like excruciating pain. I just keep trying everything. I could not get comfortable, you guys. I was just miserable. I'm like almost in tears. And then here's the even bigger kicker. Um, you know, I was expecting the doctor that I have seen this whole time, um, to him for, to be there. He was just this little uh, Jewish guy. He was so cute and I really liked him. And of course, I believe the day, it had to have been the day that Kurt was being born, there was some kind of Jewish holiday. So he was not available. And this guy comes in I've never seen before. Um, and yeah, I was not happy about that. I'm like, I don't want this guy de delivering my baby. I don't know who he is. You know, <laughs> you know, is he qualified? You know, I'm just like, everything was just going wrong, you guys. It was not um, my best moments. And so finally, I get to the point, no, yeah, I, I'm like, and I'm always hallucinating. I do remember that, like, just things were just not looking right. Um, you know, I'd see things, you know, it just, it was crazy, you guys. I was in so much pain. And I do remember at one time the nurse came in, she goes, don't let her tense up. Well, how is that possible not to tense up when you're in excruciating pain? You know, I'm like... So Daryl, you know, I'm, I'm doing this and he kept grabbing my hands trying to make me not do that. And then finally, you know, I, I stand up and I'm just kind of hugging on him, you know, because I'm like, I just can't take this. And all of a sudden, you guys, we just start dancing and it calmed me down. Like he just kept rocking me and it calmed me down. And that worked for a little while, you know, that he did that. And I just thought it was most, I look back now, I'm like, that is the most sweet thing that he could have done, you know. So, you know, it just gets me all choked up thinking about how sweet that was of him just to, you know, take me. And, you know, I can almost hear music, you know, when it was happening. And, yeah, you guys, so that was just a, a very, that was probably the most beautiful part of that um, birth. But, hmm. Yeah, no, the rest is not too pretty. I mean, it was it was intense, you guys. So I'm going to go back into this palette and finish up uh, this under eye look. So we're dancing and then I get back into the bed, you know, because things became too intense for me to stand. All of a sudden I got up, I go, Daryl, I go, I can't take this no more. You have to get the doctor. I go, I, I, something's not right. I have to, I, I feel like I have to push. And 
So he's panicking, you guys. Again, you guys, we're young. We're 21 years old. We're maybe almost 22. I swear to God, you guys, it seemed like it took hours for somebody to come into this room. And I guarantee it was probably only three minutes, but it seemed like hours. Okay, you guys, before we move on, let's get into uh, the real product that I'm super excited about. It's, the, again, the uh, Laura Mercier. Um, translucent loose setting powder. Now what this says is a 16 hour ultra blurred uh, soft matte finish. I think there was like only three or four shades. Let me check real quick. Yeah, there's only three shades. Uh, you guys, this was a little expensive. Um, how much was that? $44, you guys. Um, I think I hit a coupon. I can't tell you for sure. Like when it first came out, um, but $44 is pretty steep for a powder, but I really wanted to try it for you guys. Um, it feels breathable. 99% of the cons consumers say that the powder feels comfortable. Uh, there's a no photo flashback, uh, uh, foolproof, I guess. Uh, it says, our artist inspired press and roll technique. Okay, I'm glad I read that. So they want you to press and roll this product. Uh, comfortable for all skin types, including dry skin. There's hyaluronic acid in it. Uh, it's talc-free amino acid. Uh, so you guys, yeah, it's supposed to be really good. It's super finely milled, they say. So let's uh, give this a try. And I'm super glad that I did read uh, the press and roll technique. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Just very beautiful, plain packaging that's like frosted. And I did get mine. I did tell you guys, I think, translucent. So let's open it and see what it looks like. It has one of these, you know, where you just peel it away. <laughs> so I'm going to put a little bit in the cap. I am super excited about trying this because I have heard uh, some pretty decent reviews. I'm not going to judge this eye because of the sty. Um, there's a lot of wrinkling right now because it got so swollen. So we're not going to even pay attention to that side of the eye. And I'm just going to grab a little bit here, just like that. And I'm going to tap it on the back of my wrist, really push that into uh, the sponge here. And I'm going to try it under my eyes, you guys. So it says press and roll. Ooh, that is very smooth. Um, yeah, usually you guys know how I hate, hate powders under my eyes that is really nice okay I really like this let's try it around and I would suggest doing this you guys um, instead of going in with tons of powder and I know it seems like a little wasteful but there's a lot of powder in there let's go around these pores Ooh, yeah and what I'm liking you guys um, with this product is that it's really not lightening anything. Um, it's not changing the color of this foundation. Um, even on my nose where I had some uh, bronzing, that is blurring. Um, this is a very, very nice powder. Um, if my makeup stays on really well with this, I'm going to be super ecstatic. The nice thing is it doesn't feel dry. I know with her other uh, powder, a lot of people complain that their skin felt super dry uh, using that. I'm not getting, like I don't have that tight feeling at all. Uh, it's so lightweight. Yeah, yep, you guys, um, I, I don't like <laughs> expensive things to, to work, but this one is a very nice powder. Uh, let's see how much you get in here. You get a net weight of 0.7 ounces. So there's quite a bit of product and I didn't use that much. So that should last um, a long time. Okay, you guys, so now I'm feeling it. I'm like something, you, you gotta get her. So the nurse came in and yeah, it's time for, she goes, yeah, you gotta push. And I'm like, no, the doctor's not here. I can't, I can't <laughs> start pushing. Uh, the doctor's not here. And she's like, ma'am, you're gonna be fine, you know. I'm sure she's seen a hundred of these, but no, I wanted a doctor in there because I was so scared. You know, I, you guys, I don't know what I'm doing. So she was, he's on his way. And at that point, yeah, I couldn't wait for, I don't care if she wasn't in there, I was going to start pushing. You know, you know, if you've had children, when you got to push, you got to push. It, it's just instinct. It's going to happen. So I started pushing and, um, you know, he finally came in and you guys, I'm like, pushing so hard and he's like push harder he was mean he was very very mean and I will say that and 
Um, had I been the person I am today, <laughs> he would have got an ear for. Let me tell you, you guys, but I was super young. Um, you know, I was always told to respect my elders. He was an elder. But had that been today, that boy would have been in some tr serious trouble because he wouldn't have wanted to mess with me today. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, making noise. You know, of course, you know, I'm in pain, excruciating pain. My pelvic is tipped, you know, this kid's trying to come through. So he tells me, he goes, ma'am, you're going to have to, uh, what did he say? Ma'am, you're going to have to be quiet. There's other patients in this floor. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm doing this in as much silence as I can, you guys. It was like, it was torture. And I did have to get an episiotomy. I guess they don't even do those anymore. I did not have to push that long, you guys. Um, I think they said it took like 15 minutes. Um, but it seemed, again, you know how it is, it seems like hours and but because I had relaxed as much as possible waited up until the last minute that part of it was pretty easy and especially after the episiotomy so Kurt was born and he was 21 and a half inches long you guys he was born again I went in at seven o'clock that previous day he was born at 7 58 at night the following day so um I just remember when he was born, you know, he came out, you guys, he, uh, most beautiful thing you ever see, you know, it's just, it's your child. And even though his head was all <laughs> disheveled because uh, they had to use like the forcep things to pull him out. And again, if you guys remember, they had to turn him and everything. He looked like E.T. from the back, you know, his head was really bad. My mom was like, okay. And then all of a sudden the nurse goes, oh. <gasps> He has an angel's kiss. And I go, well, angel's kiss? What the heck is this woman talking about? And he has a dimple, you guys. It's the most beautiful, sweetest dimple. And she saw it right away. And she was so sweet. The nurse, thank God she was there because the devil himself was delivering my child. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, he was such a jerk. And of course, I have to be sewn up a little bit after the appeasement episiotomy and I'm a little jumpy you know because I don't think he numbed me or not all the way and I even say oh my gosh you know my back's burning and he's like you're fine and what that was was all the fluid where my sister had rubbed so hard was starting to hit my back and it really you know how it is putting something on a burn you know it hurts and he just was just a jerk oh my gosh I don't even remember his name. I don't want to remember his name. We were happy, and Daryl was so scared to change his diaper. I mean, his hand, Daryl's hands are, I, I'm telling you, it's like this with mine. He, they're just mammoth. And to watch him trying to change his little baby, and Daryl's like sweating. He's like, you know, freaking out because he goes, I'm going to hurt this kid. I'm like, you're not going to hurt the kid. You know, they're super flexible. He's fine. And which he was, but Daryl was so paranoid, you guys, for the longest time. Um... And I did get some new lipstick, you guys. Uh, it was during the National Lipstick Day. Um, and I got these. They were 40% off. It's by Too Faced. And this is their lip liner. And this is in the shade Badass. Okay, so now I got a um, blush called Fatass. And now I got Badass. But look how beautiful the packaging is on this. It is so pretty. And um, it's called Lady Bold. And it has this, I don't know if you guys can see... Hopefully you can. I don't know how I can do this, but there's a little heart and it just kind of, you know, um, you push it up with that little clicking thing. So let's try this out the shade. It's super creamy though. Um, and then I did get a lipstick. It's called I'm Thriving and it looks like it's the same thing. Uh, the Lady Bold. So hopefully it matches. Ooh, that is pretty. Look at this packaging. <gasps> I love it. Is it magnetic? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's try it. This is the shade here. Super pretty. Is that a heart? It is, you guys. It's shaped like a little heart. Oh, I wish you guys could see it. And it has Too Faced inside there. So maybe I can get it. There you go. So yeah, super. <laughs> I don't know. That kind of stuff, you guys. I just love so yeah, you guys, Kurt was born and first boy in our family in a very long time. So Kurt was uh, and still is very special in our family. Um, he is a wonderful kid. That's super pretty. 
it's a little drier of a formula. It's weird. You would think it would be creamier, but it goes on creamy, but it kind of dries down. I'll let you guys know how it wears. Maybe it's supposed to be a super long wearing. So yeah, you guys, that is my st uh, birthing story. And Kurt was, um, yeah, he was a little tough a toddler, you know, or a kid to raise as an infant. He was amazing. He was just that perfect little boy. Um, but as he got older, yeah, he, I told you guys that before he was super hyper. Um, the schools had a lot of trouble with him. Um, I was always the bad guy cause I was the one that disciplined him all the time. If he got in trouble in school, he would say, please call my dad. Don't call my my mom uh, because you guys I was pretty high maintenance now I will tell you and I still am um, I will tell you that I did have postpartum depression um, so I don't know if that plays a part into this menopause I think it's my hormones are just really kind of wonky uh, but I did go through that and at the time nobody kind of explained that um, or maybe it just wasn't talked about so I never got treated for it um, so that I think contributed to a lot uh, if you guys know my stories or been around for my story times, Daryl and I separated for about six months and we had Kurt and that, I, I think that really um, caused the uh, the separation. So, um, but yeah, you guys, he was a crazy toddler, an amazing teen, you know, teenager. Uh, we've never had any problems with Kurt, serious problems, um, just, you know, with school and stuff like that. But to my knowledge, I've never known Kurt to do anything that was super bad. Um, I don't think he ever could because he can't lie to me. Um, he might be able to know, but as a kid, he couldn't. He, I think he really thought I had um, eyes on the back of my head <laughs> because I saw everything and I could I could always tell if he wasn't telling me the truth. He just didn't have a lot of friends. He hung around with Daryl and I a lot. We were super strict, or I was super strict, but... We did, I didn't want to raise them like we were raised, you know, back the Gen X people, you know, we all were, you know, to be um, seen, not heard type things. And I didn't want him to be raised like that, but I didn't want him to be, um, you know, my best friend either. That came later. He just loved being with the family. Um, you know, we did a lot as a family. Like I, I told you guys, we lived by my mom and my sister, so... Those are who he played with, was his cousins and stuff. We just, you know, that's just how it was. And so as he got older, he just hung out with us. And then, um, so that's why it was super hard for me as a mom uh, when he got married to let him go. Because, you know, we were just, it just, it just felt, the house felt so empty without him. But everything's great now. He married an amazing uh, woman. I'm so blessed. We're so blessed that uh, that happened. We are all best friends. And yeah, you guys, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I gave it to the best of my memory, you know, after 30 years. Um, but I, I'm telling you, uh, people are not true when they say that, oh, you forget the pain. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's still fresh in my mind. I didn't forget any of it. But yes, it is definitely worth it. Um, I wouldn't change any of it, you know, except for getting an epidural. Yes, we're truly blessed. And all of us are who have children. Um, we are. We're, we're so blessed to have them. Okay, you guys, let's see if this oxidized. I got a little bit. And here is where I put it. So let's check. Yeah, it does oxidize. Um, turns more like a, a pink, looks like, undertone. So in a way, that's kind of good because it was too light for me. So it's good that it did oxidize, but just so you guys know. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's story time. I'm sure there'll be another one, just like I told you guys. I almost caught the house on fire again, and you know darn well I will share that with you. I love you guys so much. I'll see you Thursday, and until next time.